Now let us go through question that required you to guess and check using table. But first of all, we need to recognize such question. So how are we going to recognize whether this question required you to guess and check using table? Let me go through with you. The most important part is to learn to observe the patterns of how the question asks. Let me go through with you. Over here, you can see that this is a $10 note, a $5 note, and this is a total amount and the total number of dollars note. This is the linking point. That also tells you that there are actually one, two, three columns. Okay, so once I get it, I draw a three columns, three main columns, one, two, three. And I read the question again, I realized that this is talking about the total. And this talking about the $5 note, and here talk about $10 note. When I look into the total, they are talking about two different things. Once you're talking about the number of dollars notes and the total amount. That also tells me that I need to have a sub column. The total number of dollars notes and the total amount. Okay, so same thing for these two. Total number of $10 notes and the total amount. Same for the $5 column. So now we come to another part is how are we going to have a good start in this guess and check? If they don't give you much clue and they just give you 15, the best is choose the center number. That is, you can choose either 8 and 7 or 7, 8. Okay, let's say I love to start beginning with 8. Both of them must add up to 15. 15. How I know? The question tells me. Simple. So 8 times 5, 40. 7 times 10, 70. Total, 110. After that, you don't just blindly carry on to do the next guessing. Before you do the next guessing, observe the things. Look at this, 110 and 105. It's very close to the actual answer. So which means that you don't have to have a great jump in the number over here as you are very close to the answer and therefore you just need to do step by step okay now the next thing that you face is whether you should go above it or below it okay if you are able to observe you know that which direction to go is the right direction let's say assuming that you do not know then you can choose any of the direction first. Let's say I choose less than 8. So what number should I choose? Don't need to choose until 4. Because the, the answer over here is quite close to it. So I maybe choose 6. 6. And here must be 9. How I know it must be 9? And that must be 15. How I know? Over here. It's a link, you see? It's a link. So, 6 times 5, 30. 9 times 10, 90. Add up, 1, 2, 0. Before you go on to the next guessing, observe again, 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 5. Getting far away. You see, getting far away, where this goes down. So that's what tell you that going down is the wrong direction. Going up is the right direction. So you go up step by step. Go to 9. And of course here must be 6. Because they add up to 15. 
So, 9 times 5, 45. 6 times 10, 60. They add up to 105. And that's the answer. Simple. If you're able to guess within 3 steps, that's considered good. If you uh, guess within 5 steps, that's fine. 3 steps, good. 5 steps, is fine. If you need more than 5 steps, which means that you lack of this thing, what we call observation. Okay, so which means that when you practice, you got to learn to observe. Remember, observe not just over here, but to lean back. Okay, so in Philomath, we train our students how to learn maths and how to do maths precisely in the way that they don't have to practice tons of questions but practice the necessary questions. If you're really interested in Philomath and you would like to find out even more, you can come on either Saturday or Sunday at 3 p.m. to have a casual talk with me. So, see you there. Thank you.